In the town of Vladimir lived a young merchant named Ivan Dmitrich Akshinov. He had two shops and a house of his own. Akshinov was a handsome, fair-haired, curly-headed fellow, full of fun and very fond of singing. When quite a young man, he had been given to drink and was rocious when he had too much. But after he married, he gave up drinking, except now and then. One summer. What a great morning! It's already summer! I'm going to need the fair. Ivan Dimitri, do not start today. I had a bad dream about you. <laughs> you are afraid that when I go to the fair, I shall go on a spree. I do not know what I am afraid of. All I know is that I had a bad dream. I saw that your hair was quite gray. Well, that's a lack sign. If I don't sell out my goods, I'll send a gift from the fair. Okay, take care of me. I love you. Let's go. I promise me that you will come I'm going to miss the bear. Come on, let's go. After that, let's have some tea. Let's go! You also play guitar, man? Yes. You wanna try? Yes, no. How about let's put up the singing tonight? Huh? Let's go and have some tea together. Okay. Is there an available room inside? Yes, there is an available room inside. Let's go. Let's go. And then else was the boat with you inside. This is the room, sir. Wow, I think this place is relaxing, huh? That's right. Let's go. Hi. So tiring. How about let's go? Let's have some tea. Let's go. Let's go. It's good, huh?
already late. Let's go to sleep. Yes, I'm already sleeping. We have a long way to go. Let's go. Stand my habit to travel late. When he had gone about 25 miles, he stopped for the horses to be fed. Akshinov rested a while in the passage of the inn, and then he stepped out into the porch, and ordering a samovar to be heated, got out his guitar and began to play. Suddenly, a troika drove up with tinkling bells, and an official alighted, followed by two soldiers. Excuse me, sir. We would like to ask some questions about you. Sure. What is it? We want to know your name and the place where you live in. How long have you been here? Shall I answer your questions over to you? Where did you spend last night? Were you alone at that time or with the fellow merchant? Do you see the other merchant this morning? Why did you leave your in before that? Why do you need to cross question me? As if. I'm a thief, though. I'm having the business of my own. You don't need to question me. I'm the officer of this district. I will ask a question about you because the merchant with whom you spent last night has been found with his throat cut. We must find your things. Soldiers, escort him now. Wait, 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 where are we going? Hey, wait. Hey. I found it, sir. Why is there a knife inside your bag? It's not mine. It's not mine, sir. Who is not mine? Let me explain, sir. That's not mine, sir. Evidence are proven clear, Mr. Akshinov. That's not you mine, are sir. guilty. We will take you into custody and you will explain everything once you're in the court. What? Boy, tie him up and put him in the cart. Now! Leave me alone! As they tied his feet together and flung him into the cart, Akshinov crossed himself and wept. His money and goods were taken from him and he was sent to the nearest town and imprisoned him there. Inquiries as to his character were made in Vladimir. The merchants and other inhabitants of that town said that in former days, he used to drink and waste his time, but that he was a good man. Then the trial came on. He was charged with murdering a merchant from Ryazon and robbing him of 20,000 rubles. His wife was in despair. Excuse me, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm just here to pay a visit for my husband. His name is Ivan Dimitri. Your husband is not allowed to have visitors, ma'am. I'm please, sorry. Please, have a mercy. I'm begging you. Sorry, ma'am. Please, I just want to see him just for a moment. You may leave now, ma'am. Please. I'm sorry. Please. Sir, please. It's you again. How many times do I have to tell please. you that your husband is husband not allowed to have visitors? Please. I just want to see my husband just for a moment. Please, sir, have a mercy. <laughs> sir, please. I will just give you five minutes to talk with your husband. <laughs> Nothing else. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. After begging for so long, she was permitted to enter and was taken to her husband. As she sees her husband wearing a prison dress and is tied in chains, she fell down and did not come to her senses. Mr. Akshinov, your wife is here to pay you a visit. Wife? I will give you five minutes to talk with her. Yes, sir. She told her husband things that have been happening at home and asked him about what had happened to him. He answered and told her everything. What can we do now? I think we must petition to the Caesar and not let the innocent man perish. I have already sent a petition to the Caesar, but I think he did not accept it. Do you remember? I told you that you should not go to that thing. Jesus begged me to 
A soldier came and told Akshinov's wife to leave immediately for it was already time. Akshinov bid farewell to his family for one last time and soon after his wife left the prison. When they were gone, Akshinov recalled what had been said. Wake up, convicts! You have another friend! Why are you here, my friend? Well, my friends, I only took a horse that was tied to a sledge, and I was arrested and accused of stealing. I said I had only taken it just to get home quicker. Besides, the owner was a personal friend of mine, so we said it's all right. But no, they said, you stole it. But how or where did I steal it? They could not even tell us. Where from? From Vladimir. My family is off that town. My name is Makar. They also call me by the name of Semyonik. Hey, Semyonik? You know the merchants of Akshinov? Are they still alive? Oh, them? Of course I do. The Akshinovs are very rich. No, their father is here in Siberia. A sinner, like us, it seems. As for you, Grandad, why are you here? Why am I here? I am here inside the prison for about 26 years for my sins. What sins? Well, I think I deserve all of it. Someone had killed a merchant and put the knife among Askinov's luggage. And with that, he had been unjustly condemned. But this is wonderful, really wonderful, lads. But how old you have grown, Grandad? Why do you look so surprised? Do you know him? Me? Know him? It's really wonderful that we met here, lads. Well, perhaps, Seminik, you have heard about that affair before. Or maybe you just seen me. How could I help hearing? The world's full of rumors. But that was a long time ago. And I have forgotten what I heard. Well... Perhaps, Seminik, you have heard about who killed the merchant. Ha! It must have been him in whose the bag the knife was found. If someone else had hid the knife there, it's not a thief till it's caught. As the saying is, how could anyone put a knife into your bag while it was under your bed? It would surely have woken you up. Quiet, old man. You shall get out too. If you blab, they'll flog the life out of you. I have no intention to escape, Senyumi. You don't have to kill me. You killed me a long time ago. As I'm telling it to you, I may do so or not, as God shall direct. Next day, when the convicts were led out to work, the convoy soldiers noticed that one or other of the prisoners emptied some earth out of his boots. The prison was searched and the tunnel was found. The governor came and questioned all the prisoners to find out who had dug the hole. They all denied any knowledge of it. Those who knew would not betray Makar knowing he would be flogged almost to death. Hey you three, what are you doing? Go to sleep, it's lights out. Wait, why is there a hole in here? I should report this to the governor. Wake up, convicts! The governor is here! Oh man, wake up, old man. At last, the governor turned to Akshinov, whom he knew to be just a man. While I was roaming last night, I saw a hole behind this cell. And said, You are a truthful old man. Now tell me, before God, who dug the hole? I cannot say it, Your Honor. It's not God's will that I should tell. Now, you can do whatever you want with me. I am in your hands. Tell me right now, old man, who has been digging the hole? I'm sorry, Your Honor, but you will not gather any information from me. 
However much the governor tried, Akshinov would say no more and so the matter had to be left. That night, when Akshinov was lying on his bed and just beginning to doze, someone came quietly and sat down on his bed. He peered through the darkness and recognized Makar. Good man, forgive me. Same meaning. Why are you here? Forgive me. What do you want from me? Go away or I will call the guards now. Ivan, Dimitri, please forgive me. What for? It was I who killed the merchant and hid the knife among your things. I meant to kill you too, but I heard the noise outside. So I put the knife in your bag and escaped out of the window. Ivan, please forgive me. I will confess my sins to the police so that we could let it go. Please, just forgive me. It's easy for you to talk, Semyonik. I have suffered for about 26 years inside this cell. Where could I go to now? My wife is already dead. My children have forgotten me. There's no place to go now. Please, Ivan. Akshino so was sorry. silent and Please didn't know me. what to say. Makar slid Please. off the bed shelf and knelt upon the ground. God will forgive you, Semyonik. Maybe I am 100 times worse than you. And at these words, his heart grew light, and the longing for home left him. He no longer had any desire to leave the prison, but only hope for his last article. In spite of what Akshana had said to him, Makar confessed his guilt. But when the order of his release came, Akshinov was already dead. Thank you.